Greetings and welcome back to the recap of my wonderful 10 week journey walking up and down and across and around Spain. So in part one, we did Madrid to Toledo, to Avila, to Alba de Torma, the Camino Terraciano, and Salamanca. Then in part two, we did Salamanca all the way into Santiago. Now in part three, we're going to be going from Santiago up to Ferrol, then A Coronia, and then back into Santiago. So you know how I love maps. Let's go upstairs and take a look at the map. After taking a couple of rest days in Santiago, I began the journey to walk the Camino Anglais. This begins in either Ferrol or A Coronia. The distance from Ferrol to Santiago is 113 kilometers or 70 miles. And the distance from A Coronia to Santiago is 72 kilometers or 45 miles. Both of these routes beginning in either Ferrol or A Coronia are collectively called the Camino Anglais or the English Way because to get to Santiago from the northern countries such as England and Ireland, Scotland, you would have to take a boat across the channel and go to one of these major ports, then you could walk from there to Santiago. It was actually the British sailors back in the medieval days who started the route, the Camino Anglais, and they weren't going to Santiago for religious reasons. They were crossing the sea with merchandise in their ship to sail in Galicia. Anyone who has walked the Camino Francaise knows that it's a very, very long and very hard route, especially the beginning part when you come over the Pyrenees. It was tough back then, it's tough today, but most importantly, it was a very dangerous route to, to walk because there were a lot of thieves, a lot of, of bandits. It was dangerous for the pilgrims to come through those areas. As religious pilgrimages began to be accepted in the Catholic community of medieval days, the Camino Francaise was the primary route. So anyone coming from Europe or even Northern Europe, England, Scotland, so forth, they would have to come down and begin their journey in France and come over to Santiago. So when the pilgrims who lived in the northern European countries learned that there was a safe route, or relatively safe, that would start at the upper part of Spain in the Galicia area, which was relatively safe in those days, they were most happy to go try that route rather than the dangerous Camino Francaise. Anyone who has ridden a train in Europe knows just how wonderful the system is. It's the same thing in Spain. The train system is outstanding. There are a couple of options in Santiago. You can either take the train, which is a little under two hours and it costs you about 10 euro, or you can take a bus, which is going to take you about an hour and a half and it costs you about seven euro. So it's pretty inexpensive to get up there. The reason the train takes longer than the bus is because it goes up to A Coronia first and then back down and around to Ferrol. I don't know, I just like trains better, so that's the one I took. And it was a very nice train ride through some really beautiful country. <laughs> Thank you. 
I jokingly like to say that the Parador hotels are proof that God loves pilgrims. He takes care of us. Now, whenever I'm in a city that's large enough and has a Parador hotel, I will always go and find out if they have any discount rates for pilgrims and for senior citizens. Quite often, you can get a really good rate at a very exclusive hotel. There's a Parador right on the edge of the harbor. Beautiful, beautiful place. And so I went in with my scooter and my backpack and asked if they had a available room and also if they had a pilgrim rate. And yep, they did. And then I said, well, how about a senior citizen rate? And they go, oh, well, yeah, of course. And so anyway, I got a really nice room in Ferrol for, um, I don't know, I think it was like 65 euro or something like that, but it was really a nice room. It was well worth it. So here are some pictures of the Parador in Ferrol. The Parador Hotel System is a state-run project that takes old buildings, monasteries, palaces, abbeys, etc., and turns them into nice modern hotels. The program began in 1928, and over the years, they have reclaimed a little under 100 of these type of properties. This particular Parador is a reclaimed old maritime mansion. It's decorated in the style that it originally was built with parquet floors and all the rooms. As you walk into the front lobby of the hotel, there is a huge boat lantern that lights up the whole staircase. As you walk through all the various public spaces within the hotel, you can see a lot of sailing instruments and nautical tools that were used during the day. Down in the restaurant, the whole wall is a series of windows that look out over the bay. And of course, the cuisine served is the local seafood which has usually just been caught that day out in the bay that you're looking over. If I could offer one piece of travel advice for pilgrims, it would be take the time to stop and see all the historical sites. Too many times we're rushed on the way. We want to get to such and such place. We need to find a place to stay and we don't stop and take time to see the churches, the museums, the castles, the forts, the fortifications, the Roman ruins, all those wonderful things that make the Camino a very special trip. The best way to find out about these historical places that you should see is to ask. When you get into a town, village, Big place, small place, in between place, go to the tourist information and just say, hey, what should I see while I'm here? After checking into my hotel room in Farol and getting all settled in, my first task was to go to the tourist information and find out what it was I should be seeing while I was there. You know, you can get all that information on your phone, but it's not always accurate. And so if the TI is open, they will always have the latest information and it's a good place to go. The first place I went to go see was a walking tour and it was the San Felipe Castle of Ferrol. It wasn't too far of a walk, just you know a few minutes from my hotel. There are actually three castles at the harbor, the San Felipe Castle, the La Palma Castle, and the Castle of San Martino. These three fortifications made the whole estuary impregnable. They are referred to as the Triangle of Fire. The next place I 
ventured into was the Federal Naval Museum or the Museo Naval. When you go to these museums, be sure and ask if they have a pilgrim rate because often it's it's a reduced rate, if not free. So I always ask. This time it was free. So it was a very interesting place. The exhibit showcased all kinds of model ships, big, small, they also had a lot of artifacts, um, some antique equipment and scientific antiques, and it really showed off the history of the Spanish Navy. The last place I visited, which also had a pilgrim rate, I think they charged me like two euro to get in, but it was the Exponav, which is the Museum of Shipbuilding. And I'm sure if you're really into sailing and ships, this would be like first on your list of things to see. But it was a little over my head. It was very detailed, a little too much for me to take in in a couple of hours. But it was very interesting. So I do recommend it. With my head stuffed with all this knowledge, it was time to pack up my backpack and grab Blue Scoot and get back on the Camino. So the next morning as I was coming downstairs, packed up and ready to go, the hotel concierge said, are you taking a scooter on the Camino? And I go, yeah. He goes, well, how do you do that? And I explained to him about how I, you know, usually take the bike trails or or roads but if it's only the dirt then i have to pull them or push them if it's uphill or through rocks and so forth i had to drag him behind me and he said you know i i do a lot of biking he is an avid bicyclist and he said there's a wonderful bike trail that goes around the coastline from here to acarona which was where i was headed so he pulled out his, his maps on his phone and showed me a really good route. And so that's the route I took. It was wonderful. Starting in Ferrol, I took the Ferrol route of the Camino Anglais all the way down to Bintanzos. And then I made a sharp right turn and went up along the bay and followed the coastline all the way around to uh, Caronia. <laughs> Acaronia is a big city. Acaronia can basically be divided into two parts. The first part, the huge part, contains all the casinos. It kind of reminds me of a Spanish version of Las Vegas. Then you've got this little peninsula up north that kind of curls around, and that's the historic area. So that's where you want to go. So get through all that big city and then get yourself up to that small peninsula. From the casino area, it's about a 30 minute walk along the port to get up to the historic town. So it's not that far. As with most casino cities, you can usually find a pretty good rate at the hotels of the casinos because they try to lure you in with a great hotel rate. They know that they can get their money back with what you spend in playing their casino games. 
The walk along the porch is a very nice walk and it gets nicer as you get out of the city and, and into the old historic area. Of course, when you get into the historic area, the first place you want to go is the Iglesia de Santiago Apostol. That's the cathedral where if you were a pilgrim in the medieval days and you went on a ship, you would dock at the port and head to that cathedral. And that's where you'd probably stay your first night. Make sure you get your pilgrim passport stamped at the cathedral. It was only a three-day walk from a Coruña to Santiago, but it was really, really pretty. Walking through forests and, and wooded areas, a lot of water, um, a lot of rocks, a lot of mud, but it was really nice. I think the most memorable part of the trip was the last day coming down the mountains or the foothills into the city of Santiago, and you could just barely see the city in the distance. And you can imagine what it must have been like for the pilgrims back in the medieval days when they were making that walk. Of course, when you get closer to Santiago today, it's all covered up with buildings and you really can't see the cathedral. But I'm sure back in the medieval days, it was lovely to come over the hills and see the cathedral. I'm going to leave you now with some Galician folk music, the bagpipes and some pictures of my last couple days coming down the Camino Anglais into Santiago and of course Cathedral Square. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Come back next week when we're going to do my favorite of all the Caminos, the Camino Portuguese Coastal Route and the Spiritual Variant. See you next week.